to uh, today's uh, session of Dave's Devo. Uh, my name is Michael and I get to share with you a little bit of what I um, found in my journal recently uh, that is really eye-opening and uh, really uh, spoke to me in several ways. And so to start off this morning's Dave Devo, I want to um, ask us all a question. And that question is, um, what is it in your life that seems to be crippling you? Um, maybe it's maybe it's fear. I think fear is a pretty common one that's crippling people these days because of COVID and the news that we're hearing. So fearful of our safety and or someone else's safety. Maybe it's the results of the election and uh, who's in office and new legislature that's being passed. Um, maybe it's a behavior or something that we just don't feel like we can overcome or that we keep struggling with. Maybe it's an addiction to porn, alcohol, drugs, cigarettes. Um, maybe it's anger or bitterness or resentment that we have towards someone. Um, maybe it's a relationship. Maybe in your marriage you feel uh, so discouraged and you don't ever feel like things can ever get better, especially if the other person isn't willing to do anything. Um, maybe it's a wayward child. I don't know what it is. But it seems like we all have something um, that cripples us in some way or another. It keeps us from being effective uh, for our families, for our workplace, uh, for uh, ministry. For me, it was pornography. It was something I struggled with for 15 years, and it was something that I didn't feel like I could overcome. I was crippled by it, and although I didn't want it, um, it was something I continued to struggle with. And so uh, this chapter, uh, this piece I found in my journal um, relates to John chapter 5. And when we look in um, this chapter, we see uh, the story of um, the pool of Bethesda. Uh, this was a pool that was just inside the city of Jerusalem. And around this pool was like five porticos, uh, which are like covered um, porches. And inside these porches uh, were multitudes, it says, of um, diseased, crippled, lame, blind, um, people struggling with um, things that crippled them, literally. Um, and they, they were all surrounding this pool of Bethesda. And when we look at the scripture and find why, why are they all here, uh, we can see that they were all here because they all... We're hoping to get healed by this. This pool, uh, there was an angel of the Lord that would descend upon the pool uh, a few times a year. It would stir up the waters, and then the first person to enter into that pool would be healed. And, um, <laughs> sorry for my cat. Um, and so all these people with all these diseases and illnesses wanted to be healed from um, their sickness. And so... Uh, they surrounded this pool waiting for the angel of the Lord to de descend upon them and uh, in hoping that they would be healed. And, and so I had to uh, reflect on myself. Um, I had to reflect on uh, what is it that I was doing, hoping that I would be healed from. Um, of course, you know, there were things that I felt like I needed to do in order to get healed. And, and um, thank you. And I'm sorry. And so Jesus enters into this picture. And Jesus is um, walking through Jerusalem. He's coming back from Galilee to, to attend Jerusalem for a Jewish feast. And um, he walks by this man who's been crippled and lying here for 38 years. And Jesus simply walks by this man and he says, do you want to get well or do you wish to get well? And when I read that, I thought, what a silly question. Of course he wants to get well. Of course I want to get well. And I'll ask that same silly question to you. Do you want to get well? And you might be saying, of course I want to get well. But if you're anything like me, and if you're anything like this man at the well, you maybe respond like he did. He said, of course I want to get well. You know, 
I'm, of course I do. I've been laying here for 38 years. Of course I want to get well. Then comes the dreaded buts. He says, but I have no one to put me in the well while the water is stirring. But while I am coming, another person steps in before me. But, but, but. And I know for me, there are so many buts. Yes, I want to get healed, but pornography is everywhere. Yes, I want to get healed, but I just have these outbursts of anger every once in a while towards my spouse. Or I want to get healed, but that person is so irritating and they continue to do these things over and over again. So we all have these, these buts with good intention. We want to be healed. And so we see all these things that are crippling us and keeping us where we're at. But this man had excuses for reasons why he couldn't be healed. If only he could step into the well, he would be made well. If only someone would just put him there. If, if someone would fix him, he would be made well. And um, Jesus wanted to heal this man, but he wanted to do it differently than this man had anticipated we all have a certain criteria for things that, you know, we can move into our healing once these things are done. Or we can move out of fear once the World Health Organization says that COVID is now safe. Or once we get vaccines or these kind of things. But what starts as two weeks now becomes six months, now becomes a year. And we're just, we're stuck waiting. Or, or someone who wants to get their marriage fixed. You know, I, I want our marriage to be made well, but... That other person is not willing um, to to come my way or to stop doing the things that they're doing. And so I'm just kind of stuck. And Jesus wants to do things differently. Jesus walked by this man. He said, do you want to get well? This man gave him excuses. And Jesus said, I want to heal you differently. He says, take up your mat and walk. It's so simple. It's so profound. And this man was lying there and he heard these words of Jesus. And if you're lying there for 38 years, you obviously want to doubt that I can't. I can't walk. I haven't been able to move for 38 years. I've been stuck here. But Jesus, Jesus says, pick up your mat and walk. And I can imagine this guy maybe starts wiggling his toes or realizes that, oh, okay, something's different. Oh, my legs, they're moving. He got up, took up his mat, and, and he did exactly what Jesus said to do. It was, it was a miracle, honestly. And I believe, as I was looking at this, it was so convicting because so many times I make excuses why I can't do something. You know, I, I, need, I need to keep working all this overtime. I need to make this money so that I can do these certain things. Or I need to do this. And so I can't do that. And I think when we choose to stop making excuses or providing reasons why we can't do something, and then instead trust that through Jesus and his words, that when he says something, we can do it. When we trust in his authority and when we trust in his power, we can overcome these things. And so after this man was healed, he took up his mat and walked, and he began to tell the Jews around him that this man, this Jesus healed me. And yes, he had to confront the Pharisees because the Pharisees were giving him garbage about, you know, why are you, you know, carrying your mat on, on the Sabbath. But he was sharing with others what Jesus had done. And I think that's what Jesus wants us to do is that our healing is not just for ourselves. That when Jesus heals us from our fear, from our anxiety, from our addictions, from our behaviors, from our relationship issues, when he restores those things, he wants us to bring that hope to other people to say, Jesus can do this. He, I know it because he's done it in my life. I know that Jesus restores marriages. He's done that for us. I know that Jesus restores someone who struggles with addiction because he did that for me. And I think he wants to do it for you as well. 
I think he's saying to all of us, trust me, trust in my power, take up your mat and walk. So Father, we, we come to you right now, Lord, broken, right where we're at, Father. We may have been lying on our mats for 38 years, for 15 years, for two years, for one year, whatever it is, whatever that is crippling, crippling us and hindering us from what it is you are calling us to, Lord. We need you. And God, we always think that uh, it's certain steps or certain things we need to do to get well. But Lord, you want to heal us right where we're at. Lord, you healed this man even before this man was repentant so that he would go forth and share your healing powers your glory with others around him, Lord. You can use us right where we're at, Lord. So we give you, we hand over those things that are crippling us, Lord. We hand over our fear. We hand over our anxiety, our marriage problems, our relationship problems, our, our addictions. Lord, we ask that you would just do a miracle, not just do a miracle, but that you would do a miracle and that miracle would share your love with those around us. And Father, we ask that we would have the faith to trust in you and trust in your power and your authority and your love. And that we would choose to take up our mats and stop being stuck where we're at and stop making excuses or reasons why we can't step into our healing. And we choose to pick up our mat and share of the of your glory and your wonder, Lord. I thank you for your word and how it relates to our lives. And we pray that it would resonate with each one of us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day.